Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we've got Maxi. Uh, I'm, I was about to try to roll my R's, and I'm not going to. Maxi Ferreira. Uh, yes. <laughs> I that's so I I have learned like the the slightest bit of Spanish, but I can't mm -hmm. roll my R's. Um, it's so yeah, it's, it's hard. hard. It's hard. It's, yeah, yeah. it's really hard. So I always sound like a doofus when I'm, cause like I would practice me, uh, my partner, Marissa and I would, we were in Barcelona and it was like, okay, we're going to a place that has a double R in it. We need to tell our friends to meet us there. Okay. All right. Let, okay. I'm going to try it. Uh, it was a, the place was called Moro Fee. Oh shit. I just did it on the first try. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. It nice job. It never is. happened before. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You know what? I could. I am so happy that that just happened. I could. This could be. What a great day! Today's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to try, so, try my last name now? You uh, try my last name? Better yet, see that's what usually happens. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. It's, see, yeah, okay. It's Fer Ferreira, but you can just say Ferreira. It's totally. Acceptable. <laughs> that I, see, oh, it's so hard. Okay. So anyways, I'm going to take my, my, my one out of three win for today for rolling my R's and, uh, and move on. <laughs> so outside of my absolute inability to pronounce, uh, some Spanish characters, um, I'm super excited to have you on the show because you're working on some some really really impressive stuff that's with some some kind of future facing technology and and I'm really really excited to learn about it. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about you. So for folks who aren't familiar with you and your work, do you want to give us a bit of a, a background? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Maxi. Uh, I am a mostly front end developer at Help Scout. Um, I do a lot with React these days, uh, but yeah, I, I come from the the PHP generation, so I used to build websites uh, on a single index.php file with you know your your SQL queries at the top and your markup at the bottom, and perhaps that's why I like Astro so much. So I've been mm -hmm. playing a lot with Astro recently. Um, yeah, just a fantastic framework all around. And yeah, on top of that, I've been also playing with this couple of new experimental APIs that are the Chrome team has been working on. We there, there are plans to bring them to the web platform for all browsers to support. Right now, they're still experimental, but uh, I think they're pretty cool and they enable a lot of really cool features for the web. So yeah, I'm excited to be able to share with you all today. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about Astro to start. So mm -hmm. something that I found really exciting about just the web in general lately is it feels like we're in a little bit of a of a renaissance where when I was first getting into web dev and you know 2003 or 2002 whenever I started doing it there was DHTML and it was extremely complicated to do anything with JavaScript. It was a huge pain. Everything was really, really hard, tons of browser inconsistencies. And it, you just kind of had to live with that because there was no alternative until we saw this wave of new frameworks like MooTools and jQuery and, and all those good things. And so jQuery kind of emerged as the winner and it simplified all these cross browser things. Um, and then we, we stuck there for a little bit. It was jQuery dev. Um, as we saw that kind of, it, you know, it simplified something, but then we started building really complicated things on top of, of jQuery and it got pretty unwieldy. The needs of the web evolved, the capabilities of, of browsers evolved. And so we were like, oh, jQuery is actually pretty hard to use now. So so what, what would be better? What would be simpler? And we had another renaissance. We saw Angular, we saw Vue, we saw React and this sort of emergence of like component-based uh, JavaScript and this, this, you know, how do we make UIs that are really interactive? And, and that gave rise to the, the single page app and, you know, um, but then as we grew, like we've, we've standardized mostly, you know, in terms of, of popular adoption, we see a lot of react out in the, the production world these days. And so we're looking at component based, a lot of SPAs, uh, but then we were like, well, we have other needs. So we started doing server rendering. We're starting to get into some really advanced stuff with like 
React server components, and now we've got these, these issues around use effect, and people don't really understand how all that stuff works. So we're building more scaffolding on top of it, and it's getting really complicated again. And I think we're saying, well, the platform has evolved. Our needs have evolved. We need something different. So what's next? What's better than React? What's simpler? And we're seeing a really interesting emergence of, you know, Eleventy, Astro, SolidJS, Svelte, um, like Vite, um, just these really interesting innovations. On top of that, we've got stuff coming in the browser, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so, ha like, what have you seen that that really drove you toward Astro? Yeah, no, I think that was a yeah fantastic way to put the way we got here because the, the thing that drove me to Astro was this sense of we have too much complexity on the client, like we're shipping too much too much JavaScript to the clients. Uh, and I like the way that this HTML first frameworks like Astro, Eleventy, um, Quick, I believe it works in the same way, where they say, okay, let's instead of trying to encapsulate all of that complexity like Next.js, for example, is doing. Like, it's, it, we're going to give you a meta framework so you don't have to worry about that. But that comes at the cost of just more JavaScript. So the I like the way these HTML frameworks are doing is that instead of encapsulating the complexity, they are just eliminating it. It's, mm. it's, we're starting with HTML from scratch. And then you can opt in to hydration or to interactivity yes. if you need some JavaScript. So I'm a big fan of that. I, I think that that is, yeah probably my favorite approach for building uh, websites or applications today. I still think that SPAs, like traditional SPAs, are the better choice for a lot of apps. Like if you're building you know, Gmail or uh, Spotify on the web or Figma or something like that, you, you need an SPA. You're just going right. to get into a lot of trouble if you try to use an MPA framework like Astro to build that. But for a lot of websites, uh, this HTML frameworks like Astro are a great choice. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I, I tend to agree with you that um, it, it feels like what ended up happening was because what we needed was a way to build apps on the web. And because what we saw was this kind of component-based architecture and SPA thinking emerge as like the dominant way for companies to build apps, Everybody who was working on these complex apps, you know, working at Facebook, working at um, you know, wherever, like IBM Cloud and and all these these big big dashboards and and complex apps that were you know Airbnb all all adopting React. We saw a lot of devs saying, "Oh, well, that's the way I build for the web," and so they were they were reaching for React and SPAs, and they were building blogs, they were building marketing sites, things that you know, like when I go to a blog. Like what's the standard behavior for somebody going to a blog, right? You, you Google, you find a blog post that answers your question, you open it, you read the blog post, and then you close the page, right? So I didn't use any SPA features, right? And all these benefits that people talk about with SPAs are there. When you load an SPA, your first page load is a little bit slower because you're booting all the JavaScript and everything like that. But then subsequent page loads are near instant because you've already loaded everything. You just click a button and, and the JavaScript updates the, the DOM. And that looks really nice. Um, you get, you know, cool transitions, animations, all this, this cool stuff that you want. Uh, but the part about that that's not fun is that for a lot of websites, for probably the vast majority of websites that I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, I never navigate. I'm opening the page to look at the thing that I was sent to look at, and then I'm closing it, which means that for almost every website that I visit, if it's built as an SPA, I'm paying the cost for future navigation and future UX enhancements and never actually seeing that payoff because I'm not using the navigation or like, you know, I'm not clicking anything. I'm not doing, I'm just reading. Right. And so what I'm really excited about with, uh, with Astro and Eleven D and, and some of these other, other things is like, we're seeing a shift toward make the right thing the easy thing, right? If if I'm building a page that's just content, then just ship mm -hmm. content. Don't don't make me boot JavaScript. And then if I need interactivity, I can say, hey, this piece needs to be interactive, and now we can boot some JavaScript to make it interactive, right? And yes. I, that that to me is really exciting, but it comes with a trade off, or at least it it 
has traditionally come with the trade-off. And this is why I'm really excited to have you on because one of the major pushback items that you get when you talk about saying like, well, MPAs though, they just feel kind of bad because you have to fully reload the page whenever you like click a link to navigate. And that's no longer true, right? Because now we've got the shared tra shared element transition API. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about that and what that unlocks for us? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, this API, if uh, for folks who are not familiar uh, with it, it, it's an experimental API. It's only available on Chrome at the moment. Uh, and you have to enable like a feature flag manually. Mm -hmm. But what it allows you is to essentially transition with an animation, like smoothly transition from one page to the next. Um, even if those pages are, you know, to completely different pages that mm -hmm. are rendered on the server. Now there is a there is a there's a catch there that the, the API at this moment only supports SPA's behavior. So it doesn't work yet with MPAs like we were talking about. Oh, okay. So yeah, that that it's coming like it, that that's coming in a feature version which I there are some issues on GitHub they're talking about the kind of the APIs. Gotcha. But we can we can trick the our MPA like we're building a website with Astro. Mm -hmm. We can uh apply some behavior. There are, there are many ways in which we, we can do this and we're going to see one in the, in the demo. But basically what we can do is, is intercept the requests, right? So we're, we're loading a, a server rendered page. This is my blog post. And then I want to navigate back to the homepage, mm -hmm. but instead of letting the browser go and fetch the homepage from the server, I am intercepting the request from the client, fetching the request, fetching the content uh, with JavaScript, and then bringing that like bringing that spa style into the page and with that we get we enable this this new transitions api on on a traditional website like astro mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i think that that is the part that i find really exciting because it it sort of illustrates i think maybe why as a community we're reaching a point where we can start looking beyond the the current approach like the browsers have advanced beyond where they were. Like we've seen a really big consolidation toward using Chromium for, I think most of the browsers now are Chromium based. And then the, the ones that aren't Chromium based are doing a great job of like making sure that we're all working together to get pretty consistent support for all these things. So a lot of the things that React was built to control, like a huge portion of the React uh, code base is like synthetic events. And those are less necessary now than they were in 2015. Um, mm -hmm. And so when you when you start looking at the landscape, and then you see things like these new CSS APIs, these new like these new browser built-ins that are going to give us the ability to do like you can now do drag and drop pretty straightforwardly. It's not as complicated as it was. You can do file uploads. You can do these shared element transitions. You can do like the animation APIs are pretty dang good now. So all this stuff that was extraordinarily hard is becoming more natively supported by browsers without a bunch of cross-browser workarounds and stuff. And, and obviously that's not entirely true yet because we're still making progress here, but it feels more possible. Yeah, um, yeah, and even I think that this API is also it's a big win for SPAs as well. So if you yeah. have a a traditional React app where you have a using React Router to transition between pages, mm -hmm. now you can transition uh, between those pages using a lot less JavaScript. Yes. Before you have to you know import AnimeJS or some other library or GSAP or something like that, and do a bunch of DOM manipulation. With this, this API makes those kind of transitions really simple and with only like a few lines of vanilla JavaScript. So I think, yeah, big win for MPAs and SPAs as well. Yeah, and, and just the web platform in general, right? Because I think that the goal should never be like, we want an internet that exists without JavaScript whatsoever. Like I, I JavaScript is good. It's a, it's a wonderful way to build in interactivity and to provide additional experiences and to make the web feel app-like. And that is a goal. And, and so I think I'm, I'm really excited to see that we can limit the amount of, of library JavaScript that we're writing so that the mm -hmm. JavaScript that we do ship is, is for functionality, not for boilerplate or foundation. 
Um, mm -hmm. and that to me is really, really exciting where we're able to see like, instead of the 40, 50, 60 kilobytes of boilerplate that you got to ship down or, you know, with some of the sites you bring in enough libraries, you're looking at three, four megabytes of JavaScript to, to just get your site bootstrapped. And then your actual component code is like four kilobytes or something like yes. that. And it's like, Oh, that, that hurts. <laughs> um, but so I think it's, it's really, really fun to see that you can, you now things that if you had tried to write vanilla JavaScript to do a shared transition API, and I know because I tried this once, I remember I was trying to do this thing where I wanted uh, page transitions. And so I had my page on the screen and then I would load the the next page, I'd intercept the, the click event, load the next page in the background, and then I'd have to build like detached DOM elements. And then I would kind of get those positioned off screen. And then you could like float things around and make, it was an absolute nightmare. It totally broke on any browser that I wasn't like very actively <laughs> paying attention to. It was so flaky and weird. And, and so I just gave up on it eventually. Like this is not worth doing. Um, yes. And you move to React because React would let you do it. You could import the library, you could import the components and move things around and it just worked. Um, but with a shared element transition API, it doesn't It doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel rickety. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like, oh boy, I've just built myself a fragile little house of cards here that's gonna fall over <laughs> the first time I meet any kind of resistance. Um, so this is like, this is something that I've seen. Um, you You sort of got... A lot, you got a lot of attention for this demo that you built of Astro and the shared element transition API. You've been all over the place talking about it. Where did the, where did your initial interest in this API come from? Like what, what were you working on that got you thinking about this? Uh, I remember watching the demo, I think it came out in May, mm -hmm. um, from the Chrome team, mm -hmm. like demoing the, 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 the API and I was like blown away. And I thought that it was, you know, available for MPAs and SPAs as well. But uh, they mentioned at some point, it's only for SPAs at the moment. And I thought oh, it would be really cool to use this on an MPA, like on an Astro, like making a traditional website. And you can do this with, you know, any website that you built 20 years ago that is just HTML pages. It would be really cool if you can use the API there. Um, and... Uh, I just started experimenting. I say, okay, how how we can build this sort of uh, SPA like behavior using a client side routing uh, on an Astro website to experiment mm -hmm. with this API? And I found out about the navigation API, which is the API that I've used in my previous demos. Where the navigation API is also a kind of experimental API; it's not mm -hmm. available outside of Chrome, but it's really cool because it, it's it's uh, like a, the evolution of the history API. So if you're building a sort of client-side router today, if you're building it from scratch, you have to... So the way you, the way you will do it is you listen to clicks on mm -hmm. links and listen to form submissions and listen to all sorts of different events that will trigger a page transition. And then manually, you know, push state, call history push state, update the URL, things like that. Mm -hmm. The history API, the navigation API, lets you kind of intercept a global navigation event and it handles a lot of this, a lot of the things that you have to do manually with the history API, like uh, controlling the scroll position or the focus state or even accessibility features. So it tells the browser that it's navigating. So the browser will announce, you know, screen, re screen readers that the browser is busy doing work. So all of those things come out of the box with the navigation API. Um, so I think it's a, it's a very nice API, but the drawback is that it only works in Chrome. And you still have to do a lot of things manually when it comes mm -hmm. to um, when it comes to handling scripts. Because let's say you're on page one, you navigate to page two, and you do that by just updating the DOM. Like you, you, you load the HTML of page two, you paste that in a DOM element on page one. So you mm -hmm. have your your navigation. The problem is that if you have scripts there, uh, either in the head or in the body somewhere, you want those scripts to execute on right. the on the next page, right? So if you you can do that with navigation API, but you have to do that manually. It's a bit clunky. Mm -hmm. So uh, so today I'm going to use a different method. In the demo we have today, I'm going to use a different method using uh, a library called Turbo Drive, which is the successor of Turbo Links. I I don't know if you're familiar with Turbo Links from I think it's from the Rails team. Okay. Uh, it's an old it's an old library. I think it came out in 2013 or so. 
Oh wow. Um, and it's yeah, so I, I, and it was at around the time where you know Backbone and Angular and Lubus Stranglers were popular, and Rails and other MP, MP, uh, MPA frameworks kind of to compete with those frameworks, which allow you this you know seamless transition between pages. They created TurboLinks, which basically lets you do that. It, it, it acts as a client side router, so it intercepts your requests, um, loads the next page, updates the DOM and handles all the scripts and things like that. So it's very cool. Um, we'll see, we'll see how, how it works. So things might break, <laughs> but hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, okay. So, uh, I'm looking at the chat to see if we have any questions and a, a quick shout out. Thank you to Ben and Cynthia for the subs. Really appreciate that. Um, it is always very much appreciated and, and Ben, you are now over two years on the show. That is wild. Cynthia is a month away from a year. I just really, just, uh, I really appreciate y'all for, for, you know, supporting the show. It means, it means a lot. Um, okay. I'm not seeing any questions. So if anybody has questions, please feel free to drop those. Uh, but I think at this point, all the other questions I have are going to be easier if we're looking at code. So let me switch us over into pair programming mode here. Yes. And I'm going to start by uh, doing a shout out for the captioning. So we have uh, Diane with us today oh, from so White Coat Captioning, code. taking everything down. Thank okay. you very much, Diane. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and New Relic, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. And I have good news. We just picked up a new sponsor for the show, so Pluralsight. Um, let me actually, since I don't have the logo up here, let me let me drop a link to Pluralsight um, here. Yeah. Oh, nope. Not, it's not the homepage. There we go. All right. Let me drop a link here for y'all. Um, we have, where's my dashboard? Here we go. There we go. So thank you Pluralsight for, for jumping in. Super excited to have you on board. If you want to see the captions, you can head over to learnwithjason.dev. Um, <laughs> yeah, ben, shaking it up. We got our first non end name sponsor. So, uh, great news. Great. <laughs> and we are talking to Maxi today. So make sure you head over and, uh, and give a follow on Twitter. Um, this is, yeah, this is going to be great. So we're talking about the shared element transition API, and there was a wonderful demo that you mentioned earlier. Uh, let me see if I can find it from, it was from Jake Archibald. Yes. And let's see if uh... I can share the link to the um, blog post on the Chrome website. Is uh, it this one? No, that's not it. Uh... Um, nope, that's not it either. Check, if you check the Twitch chat, I shared the, uh, the other one is, yeah. That's the one. Okay, so this is the one <laughs> that we want is uh, this video here that Jake did is fantastic. It's a great overview of what's going on. Um, highly recommend giving it a watch. But uh, today we're going to just rely on on Maxi. So what should I do first if I'm uh, ready here? So I know the first thing is I have to have uh, Google Chrome open. So I'm going to, I, I installed it specially for today so that we'd have it available. Um, yes. Uh, what do I uh, do yeah, since we're, since we're going to be working with this uh, new API, which is super experimental at the moment, we'll, you have to enable the feature flag by by hand. So have to go to, uh, I can send you the link or, yeah, I can send you the link on the pink chat okay. where you can go. Chrome, and there. flags, and then it was um, document transition. transition. Yes. Here it is. Uh, you can change that to enabled. Yeah. All right. So I have enabled it. I'm relaunching Chrome. We're back. Awesome. That's it. And that's it. Okay. Uh, that's it. All right. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I sent you a, rep a link to a repo. Where yes, you did. So let me. The demo. Yes. So here's so the repo. And I'll drop this mm -hmm. in the chat as well for anybody who wants to uh, check it out on your own. 
and we're going to actually let me drop a link to this uh, this Chrome flag as well if anybody wants to enable it. So you can just open that in Chrome to to get your your own uh, flag up so you can change that. And then I'm going to fork this. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to uh, use the GitHub CLI, which I adore. GitHub repo fork here. And then I want that to be at uh, learn with Jason Astro. Let's see if this goes. No. All right, fine. Would I like to clone the fork? Yes, I would. <laughs> There's a way to change that org name, and I don't know what it is. I'll have to actually look up the docs at one of these points. Um, but so what are we looking at here? Uh, we have a what looks to be this a pretty straightforward Astro, Astro site. Yes, it's uh, yeah. It has two pages that I built. It has some some nice SPA like features uh, that we're okay. gonna see the point of those <laughs> in a minute. But uh, yeah, it's, oh whoops! Uh, I opened my whole folder instead of the. Let's go into Astro Records. Oh crap! Did I just clone it in here? No, where did it go? Uh, see an Astro. Oh, Astro V1. Hmm. Okay. So let's do a GitHub repo clone uh, Astro Records. And that should go into Astro Records. I'll figure out what just happened before <laughs> later. Because uh, this is a nice small repo to get set up. Oh, should be small. I think they have some. Did it clone somewhere else? Cloning into Learn with Jason Astro. Oh, that's what I did wrong. I gave it a folder name. All right, I'll clean that up later. So we'll get into Astro Records, and I'm going to open this up. And here's our actual project. So we've got, you said two pages. Um, so we've got the index and a dynamic page. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm, I'm not going to get in, we probably don't want to get too deep into the details here, but if you are interested in um, learning more, we've got a great intro. Actually, let me just show the whole Astro section here. Um, we've got a ton of good stuff. Uh, two episodes with Fred, and then once today goes up, we'll also have this episode for Maxi in here, um, where you can just learn all the things you want to learn about Astro. Uh, close that up again. And we'll head back here. Okay. Yeah. And as you can see, there's very little JavaScript. And then the rest is just HTML. Like anything below line 12 is HTML. Well, a little bit of you know, this JSX-like syntax, but it's mostly mm -hmm. HTML. Um, and you can, um, you can run the dev server to see what uh, this looks like. It might make more sense. Um, okay, so I'll do a quick npm install, get everything in here, and then I'm going to open up the package JSON. So it's got all the standard, all the standard scripts. Um, so I can just do yes. an npm run dev. Correct. Yeah. And we'll head over to Chrome. Open this up. Awesome. Yeah. And here we go. Yeah. So. Uh... This is a server-side rendered app, a traditional app with server-side rendering because we're fetching the this list of uh, records from the from an API. Mm -hmm. And if you click on any of those, you will get to the um, kind of the details view, which is another server-side render app. And I think um, the the thing that's really cool about this is if you if you view source on one of these, it's just the list. Right, like this is the HTML, and and so this is very nostalgic for me, because when I first started building for the web, the way that you learned how to build was you would you would view source, and as JavaScript tooling got more sophisticated, we got Grunt and Gulp and Webpack and Babel, it it stopped being possible because when you view the source on most 
SPAs, you just see like a div ID app and then a bunch of minified JavaScript. So you can't really see how something was built unless you can get the source code, which, you know, GitHub largely solves that problem. People are always sharing their source code. You can go and see what's going on. But this is really nice to be able to just go in and look and say like, oh, okay, so here's how that that record div is structured without having to go to the, the source. Um, so, all right, so I'm going to click into one of these and we got a, a full page load clicking back out full page load, right? So this acts yeah. exactly as I would expect a multi-page app to, to expect right. or to behave. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this, uh, app in particular has some SPA kind of like features because we're going to try to see how to improve the experience of this website using uh, this Turbo Drive package. So if you mm -hmm. go, for example, if you go to, if you enter any of those um, links and you play, you click play or you select the song, um, you can, yeah, you can pause the song. That it's and it's the same. It's actually the same song. Every record has the same song. <laughs> it's not. It's not the. Okay, song. I was like, I'm not gonna play very much of this because I don't want it to accidentally get me DMCA takedown. Um. <laughs> oh, and I made I made sure that the the song that is playing is a copyright free kind of song, so it's it should be okay. But um, you see that we're playing now the song, and the problem is that if I want to go back and check out another CD or something, I'm gonna lose the 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 playing right of the recording because this is an mpa right so if you go back uh yeah it stops playing mm -hmm. which if you were within an spa and i know that i mentioned in the beginning that if i were building spotify i wouldn't use an astro for example mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a bad example for for building a website with astro but i think there are still some use cases when uh you may want to have some element of your site uh kind of persist on on the page where you keep navigating the page right mm -hmm. so um, for example um on the learn with json website you can go in and watch uh, an episode and maybe you want to add a feature that um i don't are you using astro for this website or what, what is it this built on i what did i just do i um i am using remix i believe Oh, Remix. Okay. Okay. I, well, let's say we were building this with Astro or 11T or mm -hmm. some other, some other uh, MPA framework. Uh, and you want to play one of these videos. You want to keep and you want to keep it playing while you navigate around. Let's say I want to, mm -hmm. I want to listen to this video while I while I go to the blog and check out some blog post. Um, right. So right now, if you were right, it doesn't work. It's gone. It's gone as soon as I click. It's gone exactly. And maybe with Remix, there is a way to do this. Uh, this there probably is because I think Remix has the the routing everybody... on the client as well. I'm sorry. Give me just one second. There's like a buzz saw going on outside my window. Once. <laughs> All right. I've closed the window, and we're gonna hope for the best. <laughs> right, now I'm gonna focus. Come on, focus. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, uh, so you were saying if, uh, if we were using Astro 11 D et cetera, and we wanted this to play, um, we would need to do something with it. Right. Right. We couldn't, we couldn't do it like out of the box. Like we have to do some, some methods like the one we're going to use today, but, um, but yeah, it, it, it will suck if you had to, you know, uh, refactor your website using Next.js, for example, just because you want this feature, like you want to keep doing that, but you want to keep using Astro. Um, so that's, that's a use case that we are going to be covering with the demo today, even if it looks like Spotify and Spotify is probably not the best example of, of an MPA. I, I mean, honestly, I, what I love is that it's even possible to make a demo, even if this isn't maybe the most efficient way to do it, because mm -hmm. it just wasn't possible, um, even a few yeah. years ago, right? You would you would start and you would immediately hit so many weird edge cases to be like, you know what, let's not bother. <laughs> so yeah, yeah exactly. super, super excited to see how this works. So um, let's see, go back here. And we want to be able to specifically keep this running mm -hmm. while we navigate around the site. Yes, exactly. 
Uh, so that's the first step. Once we do that, we we are able to do the, all the, the transitions and the animations. But the first step is to create this sort of SPA-like behavior. Um, yes. So with, like I mentioned before, I used to do this with the navigation API. Mm -hmm. That was a bit clunky, and it's also like an experimental API. So, um, so for this demo, I'm going to use this uh, package called TurboDrive, which I think should be already installed. If you check the packages and... Uh, yeah, hardwire that slash turbo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's very, it's actually very easy to use. If you go to, there should be a script folder with a router. Yeah, it should be empty, empty file. So uh, here you can import turbo. So we can import um, Is it, uh... star. Uh, you have to import start as turbo from, uh, yeah, that package hardwire. Okay. Yes. And then you call turbo dot start uh yes uh, it's a method yes and that's it if you if you refresh if you save this and refresh the, the website you should now have a you should now have a sort of spa like behavior whoa it's hard to see but it's 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 there and you, and you can test uh, if you play the song, you yeah, the well, song, you can, you can just kind of see here too. Like we're not, yes. we are, we are full navigating, but we're not, am I, I'm not filtering. No, no, it's not, it's not a full navigation. Uh, if you yeah. compare this with a page refresh, if you compare it with a page refresh, you'll see that it loads all the CSS, JavaScript. All right. This is just fetching the HTML of the next page. So it's just a fetch, uh, client side fetch call for the next page. Yeah. And it's replacing that. It's, re it's updating the DOM with the next page. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So so now if you play a song and then go back, you know, click, go back, then that thing should persist there. Cool. Okay. So that was. All right. That felt like magic. So what what it's... happened? <laughs> that uh that made that work like what is what's happening under the hood did you set anything up yes ahead of time that not. made that work i did not that that is actually all the code that you need to to do this and that's because you know the, this turbo library is doing all of the heavy lifting um under the hood what's happening is that the it's it's fetching the next page okay uh, that's that's uh yeah that player is um I, I i'll go into this but that player is uh is a Preact component that, as you can see, exists on both the exists on the layout. So the element okay. is present on, on both pages. So, um, so then if I yeah. if I can attempt to reverse engineer this from my very limited understanding of what's going on, mm -hmm. what what Turbo just did, the only thing that Turbo did is it is saying when I click a a relative link to another page on this site, instead mm -hmm. of doing a full page refresh, mm -hmm. get the next pages, uh, HTML. And then it, it just, is it doing a diff and replacing like, I'm assuming just the slot here. And that's why we saw like, once I click a song, the player becomes visible. And because we didn't do a full page refresh, it remains visible. Um, but it, it, so turbo is clearly not replacing the full HTML or it would have knocked this player out. So is it just smart enough to know the only what changed? No, it is actually replacing the entire body, but since the player exists on both pages, it uh -huh. keeps the, it, you know, the, the player is, um, um, we'll, we'll see them up. If, if you go back to the demo, you play a song for a few seconds, you see that when you navigate back, the player kind of ref uh, just, just All right. play for a couple of seconds so that you see that the progress bar is it's loading and then you navigate back and it resets, right? So that's because that's because we are also replacing this element. Whoa, that was weird. It was like stacking the songs or something. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That, that's another issue that we're going to fix in a second. Got it, and that's got because it, got it. The, That's because of the this, this same uh, behavior that we're seeing. Turbo is replacing the entire document in this case the music kept playing because i think it's attached to uh to a global 
listener or something like that. Got so it. I didn't, it didn't cut the, the audio. But as you can see, the component re-rendered and it started from the beginning, from its initial state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it started to play the song again, right? It, it, so it, it, so it is replacing the element. It's just retaining, because we didn't reload the page, it's retaining that pre-act state that says, like, I'm open. Exactly, yes. Exactly. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's that's the default behavior of Turbo. It will it will replace your body, your entire mm -hmm. body of the page, and it will kind of merge your head. So it, it does some smart things on the head to say, okay, I already run this script, so this script, I don't need to run it again. Mm -hmm. And you can instruct to say, okay, this script exists on both pages, but I actually want to rerun the script gotcha. whenever you go to the next page. So you have you have a lot of control over what the behavior that you want to do is. Um, but if you want to fix that issue with the player, what we can do is um, we can go to the to the layout element mm -hmm. and we can wrap the player in a div and um, we can set the attribute there's a the attribute called data dash um, turbo dash permanent. Okay. And, and we have to give this an ID as well. So you can give it any ID like ID, uh, audio player or something. Yeah. Okay. So now this will, turbo will see this and we'll say, okay, I already have this, this, um, data, this, uh, div with the ID of player on this page, it already exists on the next page. So I'm not going to replace it. Right. And that will fix the issue that we have with the um, with the kind of the player resetting okay so if you go back now you see that the state is kind of persisted cool that's really cool and as i'm navigating around now it's not changing i'm going to go into this one yeah dang that's slick that was very little code to do something that I thought was going to take us most of the episode. I don't know if you've seen me checking the time, but I'm like, I don't know. We're going to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want, and that's why uh, I didn't use the navigation API for this because with the navigation API, we have to build a lot of these things from scratch. Right. So this is a bit more magical, but it's also more kind of bulletproof mm -hmm. faster, of course. And you can actually, yeah, this is a library that's been around for, almost 10 years now. So it's pretty, pretty consistent. I will say, uh, I will, I, as opposed to the navigation API, I will actually ship this to production, for example. Mm, okay. Um, so, and as you also mentioned, I don't know if we have folks from Astro on the chat, but there is, uh, an RFC on the Astro, Astro GitHub, uh, repo where they're talking about something called, uh, I think it's called permanent islands or, uh, What's the persistent island? I think it is. Um, persistent islands. I think it's called. Let me uh, let me find you a link. Is there a? Let's see. Add the link here. Uh, I'll, send you, uh, I'll send it over to you, the Twitch. I got it. I got it. Let's uh, let's go here. Yeah, we can drop. Oh, everybody, everybody's got this link. Thank you. For... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, perfect. So, persistent islands um, is going to give us. It's going to give us basically the behavior we just saw, cool. but out of the box. Right, out of the box with Astro. You can say, okay, this element, if it exists on the next page, then keep it. Don't replace it. Oh, I'm not logged in because I'm in Chrome. I have to upvote that later. <laughs> this is great. I love this. Yeah. So, yeah, but for now, we have to use this third-party library. Hopefully, mm -hmm. in the future, mm -hmm. we won't have to. Um, but okay. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So, all right, we have this sort of SPA behavior now for mm -hmm. MPA. So now we can start using the, the, the shared element transition API. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to hook into a couple of events that turbo, uh, dispatches whenever the user visits a new page. Okay. And we're going to 
call this new API. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to listen for the, so we're going to document that, um, add event listener. Am I doing it in router? Yes. Yes. You can do it right here. This is, yeah, this file is loaded globally on every page. So we can do, uh, anything here. Uh, and the event is called turbo colon before that, uh, no, sorry. Turbo, lo turbo colon load. Okay. So that's, um, yeah, whenever we load a page, we call this. And in here, we have to listen to another event. So this is a bit, bit clunky, but we have to do it this way. Otherwise, we'll get uh, a multiple event listeners per page. So here we have to listen for the event turbo column before render. Before render like this? Um, sorry, it's before dash render. Like that? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to pass a callback. Uh, we're going to define this in, as a separate function if um, if you can, so that we can detach it then. So okay. we can call it before render. And yeah. Okay. And at the end of this function, so we can do it right here, we're going to stop listening for that uh, before render event. So we can call document uh, remove event listener uh, turbo before render and going to pass this before render function. And uh, you want it inside so, the function like this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a bit boilerplate, but we have to do this so that the the we don't attach multiple events per right. page load. Uh, so now we can start in, inside of this before render function. We can start playing with the transition API, and it's very easy to um, to get started. So uh, the first we're gonna do oh sorry this this function takes an event uh, as an as an argument, which is a, a turbo event, and if we call event dot prevent default here. Uh, this will prevent the navigation, so it will it will you know fetch the next page, but it won't render. So we just okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna handle the rendering by ourselves. Okay. Um, and now okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do... add a couple notes here. Uh, prevent render uh, adding multiple event listeners. Yes. And then this is going to um, loads the next pages HTML, but doesn't. Uh, render it. Correct. Okay. Yes. So by the time this before render function is called, we already have the HTML of the next page, but we are saying, okay, don't render it just yet. Okay. So now we can start using the, the shared element transition API. Um, we should check if we have access to the API before so that we don't break on Firefox or other browsers. Okay. Um, so we can say if, if document that create document transition um, doesn't exist for some reason, or if not document, um, which is going to return. Oh, actually we can do, what we can do here is call inside of this, if we can call, um, sorry, I lost the, is it call like event? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Is it, um, isn't it like if you, if you do, if something like that, Yes. Thing? Yeah. I think it's either way should work, I believe. But yeah, we can. So if we do, uh, can I do the opposite of this? So if create document decision is not in document. Okay. okay. So in this case, we're going to call event dot, um, detail dot resume. Detail dot resume and Resume. Resume. Yeah. Resume. And that's a function call. And that's going to resume the rendering that we just prevented uh, on line 10. Got it. Uh, and we're going to return here. We're going to return early because this browser doesn't support the transition API. Support uh, fallback. OK. Yes. Uh, so now here we can actually create a transition, uh, and we're going to call, uh, create document, uh, create document transition. And that will give us back a transition object, which we can, um, grab. So we can say const transition equals to that. Yes. 
Okay. And with here, the transition has, I think it only has one method, I believe, that's it, start. So we can call transition.start and pass a callback. And in this callback, we're going to call event.detail.resume. So we're going to say render as part of the transition. OK. And if we didn't, if I didn't mess up, I think we should we should see the transition happening if you refresh the page now. Let's okay, see. so refreshing. I think it's yeah, it's there. It's a it's a very subtle. It's like a fade. fade out. Yes. Okay. This is the default. This is the default behavior of this API. We can make this more obvious by so. A, yes. When when uh, you say default, there's there is no like yeah, this is empty. So. That, that is not like you did code ahead of time. That's just when we say create an element transition, by default, it does a crossfade. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's a default. So a crossfade all of this, to, yeah. this behavior here of this crossfade happening is all because of this, like these, exactly. these four lines of code. Yes. Got it. Okay. Right. Very, very cool. Uh, and, and the transition is, we can talk about it, how it works in a minute, but we, the cool thing is that we can control it with CSS. Um, so if we go to that transition CSS file that, uh, I created, but it's, as you, as you just show this is empty. Oh um, yeah. Let me, sorry. I'm responding to a yeah. question in chat. Uh, now I'm going back to this transitions.css. Okay. Yes, uh, and here we can um, we can style the transition like, because it's a CSS transition between two elements. Right. So the um, the elements that we have to target for the CSS rule are I think there are pseudo elements, and there are, to target that you have to do colon colon uh, page dash transition dash outgoing image outgoing dash image. There you go. Like and in here in, par in parentheses, we have to after the after image, we have to pass in parentheses uh, the the tag of the element. So in this case, we only have one element that is transitional that is called root. So we have to pass root here, like that. Yeah, and it's not it's not a class name. It's it's a it's a tag which is I think just a new a new thing they came up with. Um, and we're gonna style also the incoming image as well. We can do it on the same rule. So you can copy that first. Um, First line, and we can uh, style the incoming like that? image as well. Yeah, but change outgoing with incoming. Okay. There you go. And here we can say animation duration, animation dash duration, for example, uh, let's say five seconds. So that it's more obvious that uh, what what's going on. All right. So oh it's the God. same transition, but yeah. we can control. Uh, with CSS. Amazing for debugging. If you ship this to production, <laughs> I would send you hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now we can comment it out right away, just in case. <laughs> no, no, this is, this is great because what I, what I do like about this is when you, you know, if we, if we slow it down a little bit by slowing it down, we get really good feedback on what's happening. Cause when it is that default is, is what, like 200 milliseconds, it's super fast. Right. Let me let me refresh to get the new. Yeah, it's it's like so fast that you almost can't see what's happening. So mm -hmm. that slowdown for development is is incredible. Yeah, and this uh, so you might be wondering what are these pseudo elements out there? These weird looking rules that we have, and the way this works is uh, if you go back to the script to the router.js file. Um. The way this works is that when you call transition.start, mm -hmm. at that point, the browser before executing the callback, the browser will first take a screenshot of the of the page at, at this very moment, right? Before the, the transition happened. And then it will execute the callback. In the callback, we can update the DOM and do all of those things. Those updates will happen behind the screenshot that we just take. So we can do a bunch of things here, but the user will still see the old page because it's a screenshot on top. Mm -hmm. And then by the time the callback ends, uh, it will take another screenshot. 
that's the after state, right? And then mm. it will it will transition between those two. In this case, we're seeing that one fades in and the other one fades out, and we right. get the transition. Right. Okay, that makes sense. I'm with you. Yeah. So uh, we can play now with uh, we another transition. So we we can we can define in the CSS file. Okay. Since we can define. Um, we can define a new animation with the keyframes. So add keyframes, and we're gonna call this um, slide right, slide okay. right. And here we're gonna say from and transform translate x one hundred percent. Yeah, and then we're gonna get the slide left, which is gonna do the opposite. We're gonna it's gonna be um to translate x minus 100 percent okay so now now we will need to target the incoming and outgoing image separately so what we want to do is we want to give the outgoing image we want to give the the slide left animation so we can say animation um Yes, and then slide right to the other one. Okay. And let's see how see how this looks. Oh, I think I broke it. I broke it. What did I break? We might have I think we need more more stuff in the animation rule. So let's say animation three uh sorry on the line seven. Let's say uh oh, one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we need um yeah, we need uh, the first the duration. So I think it's three, yeah, two seconds. Then the easing. So we can say is is out or something like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I don't know if the order matters. Um, e yeah, I don't remember. Let's try this. If not, we can push the easing before. Oh, yeah, it works. Perfect. Hey. <laughs> So it always slides to the to the right, like it's always coming from the right, mm -hmm. um, even if you go back. And that's we have to do some other things. You want to reverse the the transition, but in this case, it doesn't doesn't really matter. But it, you notice that the the entire page transition, right? So if mm -hmm. if you click on even the header, and the header is something that we might want to, you know, we don't want to oh. we don't want to transition the header as well. If you, if you can. So uh, what we can do is. With the API, we can tag certain elements on the page mm -hmm. to instruct the browser to take a separate screenshot for those. And once we have that, they, they will transition and animate independently. So what we can do here is we can define a class here in the in this CSS file. Okay. Um, uh, let's... We're gonna call it yeah, we can call it page header or something like that. And here we need uh to apply a an uh, uh, yeah, an attribute called page dash transition dash tag. In in here or in the in, in here, yes, it's a yeah, it's a like a style. It's a new thing that you can you can define, and here we can give it any name. I don't think it, it has to be a string. I think it can be. Oh, it can uh, be just. It's just a value. Yeah. Just gotcha. Header. And then we also need the rule contains um, contains contain column paint. Uh, what was the this value? Oh, paint. Paint. This uh, contain paint is basically saying that the kind of the the contents of this element doesn't mm -hmm. they don't leak outside of its boundaries, right? So this is okay. just to help the transition. And then I need uh, to give this. Yes. Do I need to do uh, it in this element, I... or do I need to do it in the the header component? I think you have to go into the header component. Okay, so let's go into the header. And then here, I want the class to be page header, right? Page header, exactly. Okay, yes. so I'm going to save that one, come out here to my transitions, save this one, going to reload the page. Look at it go. Yeah. All right, very cool. Yeah, yeah. And we still have all the, and I think if you, kind of if you play, uh, a song now you have the same problem with the footer 
that it also will kind of transition with the rest of of the page. We can we can apply the same kind of behavior if you want to, but we don't we don't have to. That will also or be it was player, right? So we can honestly what we or is it just a uh, player? That oh, we have a wrapping div around the player if you want to use that on layout. Oh, that's right, we do. So on okay, layout, kind of that and there. this one we could just call class like uh, bottom player, and then if we just come in here to the transitions, and right, we should get the same output. So let me refresh the page, make sure you got that. Oh, you will get an error here, and I will. Talk about why in a minute. Yeah, did, did it break or something? Looks like it broke and I don't know why I broke it. So that that is probably because you have two elements, you're assigning the same transition tag to two elements on the page. No, okay, I get it, I get it, all right. So you need to, yes. So that's kind of like a constraint of the API. Only one element of the page can have a given transition tag. And that's because you need to, the browser needs to know which, you know, which element. Totally makes page. sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I still seem to have broken it and I don't know how, um, oh. what changed? Did I change anything in here? Oh, it could be because of that contain paint rule. Try removing that and see if that, that fixes at least the UI. Hit play. Yeah. Yeah. But now I think it will, the transition will work. Yeah, because yeah. we didn't tell it to to sit still. Yes, exactly. Okay. So um, this might be, maybe, maybe if we apply the class instead of to the wrapping div to the component. Okay. Um. So yeah, let's let's move that to the player component. I'm not sure if this will work, but let's see. This seems to be like a, some sort of conflict between the styling of this element and. Um... I think I just had an inconsistent DOM thing. Okay, so now it plays. Oh, I think you need to give it give the give it the contain paint, paint again. Yes. Okay, let's try again. Works and works. Hey. Nice. <laughs> All right. So I mean this this feels great. Like we we're already doing something pretty cool here. Um and I have a feeling we can make it cooler. We can, yes. We can. And it, it it's a bit more JavaScript to make it uh, a bit more cooler because Basically, an animation that I did on on a previous demo is that instead of this doing this slide slide animation here, when you click on an album, the mm -hmm. the cover will expand to sit on the you know on the where the album is on the next page. Right. Um, we can do that, but the problem that one issue that we have is that we have to first find the element on this page that has the cover of the album that we want to transition to mm -hmm. and programmatically apply this class, this class that has a transition tag. Mm. Okay. Right? Because we can't, we can't give the tag to every element on the page because we just saw only one element on the page can have the, the tag. Got it. Yeah. So to do so that. What we can, yes. Uh, what we can do is and we also need to, it would be helpful also to separate the transitions between if you're going from the home page to the album page mm -hmm. and the transition going from the album page to the home page because you will need to do different behavior in those. So, what we can do is um, instead of creating the transition down here, what we can do is we can check, let's see what I have here. All right, we can check the location path name. So you can check if location path name is um, equals to uh, just a slash. So it's, we're on the home page. Uh, we can call a function. We're going to call a function that we're going to mm -hmm. find. We're going to call it handle home navigation. And we're going to pass the event, the uh, 
that event variable that we have. Okay. So let's... And otherwise, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna create a function here. And then the other and one then, would be album nav or something. Yes, handle album nav. Yes, exactly. Okay, and we'll do an else handle album navigation. All right, and then my assumption is we're going to move this into these functions. Yes, exactly. Okay. Let's start with the album, the album nav first. That, that's a bit easier. Okay. So here, um, in addition to this, we need to know. Hold on. Okay. So we need to find first the the image that corresponds to the album we are navigating to, right? So what we can do is we can fetch uh, or we can query the DOM for the link that has the the location path name. So the if okay. we're going to the route album slash one two three, we want to query the DOM for the link that has that href album one two three, right? Okay, so there we a, want document dot yeah. uh, query selector, and then we can do um, href equals, and then was it just like event dot target dot href? Uh, look, at, uh, we can do location dot path name. I think. Oh, Let's oh, because the location dot path name is already going to be updated. Yes, yes. At this Got point, it. yeah. At this point, we are ready to render the next page, which we just haven't done something yet. So, um, so um, that's going to be the link. Yeah, the album exactly. Uh, and let's see if this, can you console log that? I don't know if this will give us the, let's just make sure that it's giving out the album. Okay. So let's open up here. I'm going to switch that to the bottom, go to the console, refresh and nope. Doesn't like that. Doesn't like query selector on dollar. Oh, do I need to quote it? Okay, so okay, that perfect. gives us the the link. Yeah, it's empty now because we already move on to the next page. So that element is kind of hanging oh, in there. <laughs> but if we query now, if, if within that album link element, we queried, mm -hmm. um, uh, what's it called? I think it has a class name. We can just okay. query the image. It should be only one image there. Uh, okay. So you can say, yeah. Query selector image. Okay. And then and now we can give that image a class of um you can see class list that add. And we have to create this class that will give it the transition tag. So we say album image. Yeah. Okay. Now in here, I'm gonna take this and say album image. And then we're going to call this one image. Um, and then I need to also update that in the component, right? Um, right. Did, we like are, the... so we're, we're giving the class via JavaScript, so we don't need to do it here. Right. We're, so we're only adding it on this one. How do we add it on the don't we? Cause doesn't it need to match oh. here too? Like this one needs the, the, uh, transition yes. tag and then. So yeah, so so with JavaScript, we're giving it to the album cover here on the on the index page, and we also need to get, update the um, the the image on the next page. So if you go to uh, what's it, what's the name? Album oh, dot yeah. Astro. Oh, oh yes. okay. Sorry, I misunderstood how this worked. So I was looking at the wrong thing. Um, yeah, card is one. The card component is one of those thumbnails, and got it. Yeah, it's not the same. Sorry, a bit confusing. <laughs> So I need to use this album image class on the image here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so theoretically, this will just work, right? This will work. Yes. We need to do a bit of, oh, we need to, yes, it will work. So we'll, let's try it. Let's try it. Look at it go. <laughs> 
Okay, but it doesn't the, work on the way back for reasons I don't understand. Uh, because we need to implement the other the other function. Handle ah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, we didn't do any of that. Um, yeah. So let me go back to our router. And for the home We've, navigation, to at least unbreak it, we can just throw this in here, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then if we go here, pop. And then... On the way back, it just kind of goes back to the crossfade. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So in the next one, so we wanna we wanna make it like pop back when we go back to the to the place where it was. Mm -hmm. Is um, let's see. It's a bit. Uh, let me see. I have a, some messy code here, <laughs> but essentially we need to do the kind of the 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 opposite. So instead of Instead of applying the class name to the album before we render, we need to mm -hmm. first render. So we need to first call that event detail resume function. Okay. And after we do that, we will have to find the the album, the image, and apply the class. So so same same code here. Same. Yeah, I think we can use the same code. Yeah, let's just use. All same right. Code. Why not? Let's just abstract that out. Um, and we'll do one called add image class and get the we don't even need anything we can just drop this all in because it's all self-contained then oh I can... actually let, let's pass the, the let's pass the path name here because oh, that's we're right, gonna that's right. have to change that path name all right uh yes okay let me make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on so we got our add image class and so in here I'm going to change this out to be add image class. We'll pass in location path name, and then that replaces mm -hmm. all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then yep. here we want to add image class. And here we want to pass. This, this is a, a bit tricky because we want to pass the the um, the location where where we come from. Right. But at this point, we already updated the URL. So if you right. go to location path, then we would always get like the you know, slash. Mm -hmm. So to get it, we can get it from Turbo, but we have to do it in two ways because it it depends on whether we're, it's the first navigation or, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it depends on whether you are navigating back with the back icon on the gotcha. browser or if you are navigating via a link. Okay. So to get the path, we can call turbo.navigator. Uh, that last last visit, and this can be undefined. Uh, so we, we have to do the uh, uh, optional chaining with the. Um, oh, yeah, optional so chaining. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That uh, and and here location path name. So this is the, the path name of the last visit. But this could be undefined. So if this if it doesn't exist, so we can say or, and get it from Turbo Navigator. Um, current visit re referrer path name refer refer yeah path name so it's a bit clunky but uh this way we 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 make sure that we get the path name always okay and so theoretically speaking this now will do the thing let's see if we go back Oh, no, oh. It doesn't like null reading query selector at image class. Oh, uh, one thing, this, and this is also one of these gotchas with Turbo. When we call event dot detail dot resume, mm -hmm. this is uh, this is not updated right away. So this is an asynchronous call that updates on the next um, kind of on the next animation frame does that work so we need to uh let's try this i don't know if this will work but let, let's try this okay let's see if it yells at us so we're going to try going here and then we're going to try to go back yeah and it, it mostly it started to work and then it bailed did you see that no i think that's because we have the other sliding animation so if you comment that out on the css so if you can comment that uh yeah those things okay and wait. If 
you go back, as you go back. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. And I think we this is some, because we've yeah. got the animation duration that it's out of sync. So yes. boom, boom, boom. Nice. Look at it go, y'all. That's very, that's very cool. All right. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are some improvements that we can make. We're probably going to run out of time, but, um, yeah, there are some other things we can do. We can, we can just talk about them. So for example, the, um, in this case, the, the UI is very, or the API that we're using, and also because we're running on local host is super fast, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's super fast. So if you, when you click on a link, the next one loads very quickly, but if we had uh, a slow API, mm -hmm. What will happen is that you click on a link and then the screen will froze until we we next we get the next yeah uh, we get the, the data and then it will animate. Mm -hmm. So one way to kind of fix this is to instead of waiting for the next page to load, we can transition right away using a sort of template with the information we already have. Oh, um, okay. It's a bit more, yeah. It's it's a bit more work to implement it. We can show. Uh, I can send you a link to another demo. Yeah, that let's let's look at some demos because we've got about ten minutes here. Um, so maybe we can just show some stuff you've built that that has the advanced features. Yeah, this this one. Um, yeah, let's. Oh, I sent it in chat as well. Okay, heading over here. This one handles that behavior, where if you click on the one on the left, for example. You know, that will load pretty pretty quickly. Uh, but the one on the right has a slowdown on the server. Got it. So when you click on it, it will still navigate instantly. It will transition instantly. But then when the data comes back, we'll update the UI. That's super cool. Yeah. So that's one that's one way to handle it. And I guess that's you know, if you if you're building a mobile app for iOS or Android, you will do something like this as well. Like you want to wait until you have the next page to transition, you will just mm -hmm. transition right away. And then when the data comes in, um, oh, we have an issue in the header. It's, yeah. This is great though. I mean, th this is, uh, like it's, it's extremely cool how appy this feels, especially because I'm, I'm making some assumptions here that the code under the hood has more conditional stuff. Like you're looking for, uh, I'm assuming if you're going hitting the back button instead of navigating, you would want it to go right to left or, or left mm -hmm. to right. Um, and you know, we we might want to do something about if you're on the home page and you click the home page, you don't necessarily want to like re-navigate. Um, which oh wait, did that yeah. already happen? Look at that. That just handled itself. You don't have to write any code at all. Um <laughs> so this is I mean, but this is so cool because it it means that like what how many lines of code did we write here we wrote 60 lines of javascript and 35 lines of css not counting the stuff that we commented out like this is incredible how much we were able to do with very under 100 lines of code yeah yeah no it's pretty cool uh like i mentioned the the behavior we we get the behavior of the clients out routing Mm -hmm. all of the turbo the turbo package but that's coming that's probably going to come out of the box to astro with this persistent island um uh, feature in the future so and so this is this is going to work um like will all of them have the the slow transition if by default or is it only the ones that like you manually set up for slow uh you can tr you can try no, this should all hey, work look at it go the same way yeah yeah, we have a problem on the way back because we're not doing anything special to transition back. Uh, but the transition should work even if you're just uh, simulating the the network request. Mm -hmm. And you can see that this one. If you see, if you check the the browser tab when you're loading one of these pages. So if you're navigating, um, let's say you're navigating, you see that the tab on the browser tab is loading. Mm -hmm. That is that is the behavior of the a native browser navigation. So if we were loading two separate pages, that's the behavior you will get. 
And Ooh. we get this kind of behavior client side with, through the navigation API, which uh, we didn't talk about today, but I'm going to share a link to the, the docs because it's pretty, pretty cool. That is extremely cool. Yeah. So, so, you know, this one is manually slowed down, but this one I've now throttled, like I'm on a, you know, on my phone in a subway tunnel and you still get that, that behavior. That is, that is really wonderful. Um, let me turn that off. So I don't forget that that's on and it just, yeah, it just feels good. I love that it's, it's working with the browser. You get that loading state. Uh, let's see. Webneat has a question. Uh, would these navigations be faster than in a traditional SPA since API calls are happening on the server, which has faster internet than the client? Uh, would it be faster in a traditional SPA? I think they should work the same way. So in a traditional SPA, you probably already have, you are rendering client side as well, right? So you have, instead of fetching the HTML and all mm -hmm. the markup from the server, mm -hmm. you're just fetching data. You're just fetching a JSON file or, or response and then rendering on the, on the client. So it might be faster because you just have to fetch less information but also the browser has to do more work and you have to ship more JavaScript to render those things on the client. So, right. And, and yeah, so it, it, yeah, I think that's, that feels like something where you sort of have to just try it. Um, mm -hmm. but it feels as though it, sh it shouldn't take, it, it feels like it should kind of just more or less tie unless you're dealing with some pretty large data sets um mm -hmm. just because you know the the html on the page is rarely the the size bottleneck it's usually exactly. like images and uh, media files or if you've got a really large javascript bundle um mm -hmm. so that that yeah that feels like it could be you know it, we're early enough in this space that i don't know that we have any benchmarks or any like reasonable data that we could pull from but my hunch is that it'll be pretty like apples to apples in terms of performance. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. It might be a difference in, for example, if you're in a slow device that uh, it's slow to render on that device on the client, mm -hmm. then rendering the, on the server will be faster. Like if, mm -hmm. if you can fetch a HTML, it will be faster. That will work faster. But on a, on a you know on a, on a fast device like an M1 Mac, the difference will be uh, you, know, you won't be able to notice the difference. Got it. And so you dropped a link to this, but this, this is the, um, what we would be able to do to get the browser API, this, what you're talking, uh, with yes. the, the loader, this is the exactly. API that you would use to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sharing some of the links that you shared again, because I have an automation that, that pulls them into, that pulls the links that I share into a, a doc for going into the show notes. Um, Speaking of show notes, is there any, like, where should somebody go if they want to learn more? Like if, it, are there, um, any, you know, are, are you teaching this anywhere else? Are there docs that you recommend any other examples? What should people go see that we haven't already shared? Um, I can share a link to a blog post that I wrote. Um, I'm going to share it in the chat as well. Uh, last month where I talk about some of this. Some of the, I talk about the navigation API. I talk about the page transition API. It's basically walk you through everything we did today mm -hmm. uh, on this movies example, um, and can also explains you know under the hood how things work. So this is another another demo that I built. Where one other thing about this one, another this is another of those edge cases they need to handle. So let's say you go to one of these movies and you scroll down a little bit. You go to one of the actors. Right. And then you can either, if you come back, if you click the browser back button, you know, the, the, is the author that kind of zooms out into the slot. But if you go back to the, that same, uh, um, actor and you click one of the related movies, now is the movie poster that, that expands. Mm -hmm. And in those, in both of those cases, the, the transition that is happening is that you're going from the, from the. Uh, person profile page to the movie profile page. So it's mm -hmm. the same kind of animation, but you need to know what sort of animation you're looking for. Right, so, right, right. Because it depends on whether you click on one thing or the next. So I think this is probably for a more 
uh, advanced uh, topic, but uh, something using something like um, a state machine to handle all those different types of transitions will be, mm -hmm. will be useful in those cases. And if you are interested in state machines, we have so many good ways. <laughs> I think I have a whole section on state machines. Here we go. Wow. Um, I love state machines. I think they're amazing. <laughs> you should definitely go and dig into these on the show. We've had David on a handful of times. I've been, I've built some on my own. We've had, uh, uh, Sagoon came on and uh, yeah, just so, so many good things happen. So, uh, definitely go and, and check those out. Uh, all right. So let me do another quick round of, um, just, just telling people what to do. Get ready, chat. I'm about to tell you your business. Um, make sure you go and give Maxi a follow on Twitter. Uh, I need to find, lost my chat window here. Here we go. And also, uh, this episode, like every episode, is being live captioned. We've got Diane from White Coat Captioning doing all that for us today. Thank you very much for being here, Diane. Um, and that is made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, NX, New Relic, and brand new Plural site. thank you very much for making this show more accessible to more people. Um, while you're checking out things on the site, make sure you go and take a look at the schedule. We got all sorts of good stuff coming up. Next week, we are going to look into building a reactive backend for a web app. Um, and this is this is some pretty cool stuff. The the uh, the convex API is is real cool, real interesting. It's it's stuff I haven't really seen before. So come back and check this one out because I think it. It, uh, it plays with, with my understanding of web dev and I'm, I'm excited to see how y'all feel about it. Uh, Maxi, anything you want people to look at any, any, um, any links or, or things we didn't share that you want to mention before we wrap up? Uh, no, I think we shared the, yeah, we already shared the, the docs of the official documentation for this. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend you, you play with this. It's a very cool API to play with. And if you have any feedback, please reach out to the Chrome team and, and just give it to them because they're looking for that. They're looking for us to, to play with the API and find all the, the clunkiness and things like that. So yeah, have fun. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, really, really good stuff going on here. Uh, I'm gonna go find us somebody to raid and, oh, come on. Twitch is like actively killing me right now. Um, so Something is going on with their search. Really? Oh my goodness! I can't. Uh, I can't seem to actually search. To it. Is anybody open right now? Chat. Send me a. Tell me who you want to watch. Um, and we'll go raid them. Is coding with Luke live right now? Perfect. We will go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go raid Luke. And uh, thank you, Maxi, so much for hanging out with us today. This was an absolute blast. We will see you all next time. Thank you for time. having me.